to the banger? Hell yeah. <laughs> Classes in session, this is the show Where knowledge is profit, just so you know Army Piper, OC guy and trade fly Bringing crypto news to the whole alumni It's the word on the market, the one-stop shop For the info you need every time that it drops The go-to show that you need right now This is Piper Academy, it's all going down, let's go Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Piper Academy. We got market sell-off still happening right now. Fear and greed coming in at 65. More pain in the future. And uh, a big major research company in crypto has just sold off. All that and a whole lot more today on Piper Academy. Guys, let's get into classes in session. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Piper Academy. I am Army Piper, and this is the show where we come at you every morning, Monday to Friday, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, bringing you guys the news, the charts, and the markets, everything. You need to have knowledge because knowledge is profit, guys. Uh, we've got a lot of news to unravel today and we're unpack, and we're going to talk about it. But uh, I'm not going to be doing it by myself because I hate talking for an hour to myself. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up my co-host. we got Trade Fly and the OC guy in the house. What's up, fellas? How are you guys doing? What's going on, guys? I think I might officially adopt this look. One, it goes with the, the name, Tradefly. But the other thing is, it makes the lights so much better. Uh, and if you guys already know, I, uh, I don't go to sleep till 3 a.m. now. So this, is, uh, this feels good. Yeah, you uh, you're, you're, you're on a night shift now at work at your, yeah. at your secret job. Um, and so yeah, you're you're uh, you're getting off work. You're sitting around for a couple of hours, and then you are uh, getting on here on the show. We appreciate you making it every day, man. Um, OC, what's up, bro? Not much. It's always my PC is just killing me for some reason. I had connection problems, as you may already know. But yeah, I'm finally make it on time. Make it to the show and not hold you guys back as much. <laughs> uh, dude, you're that, always good. Good. you're always good. You're always good. Hey, you know, you're like uh your 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 internet connection is like the uh the, the crypto market. It's it's volatile, but at the end of the day, you you get big gains from it. So, uh we are we are working with you, don't worry. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, so right now just the crypto market. <laughs> Yeah, so let's go ahead and real quick jump into the morning economic uh, rollout so everyone can have a look at what's going on there. And then we're going to uh, get into what is happening uh, with, with some news. There's some news on the, on the front in a major research company sold. Uh, I even, on the thumbnail, you saw it, I talked about should I sell. Uh, there is something in particular that I'm talking about, and I'm going to show you what that is also. So let's go ahead and jump over there into today's news. Uh, guys, this is the daily news brought to you by decrypt.tax. Um, our trusted tax official. If you guys have any questions or if you forgot that yesterday was your tax due date, um, go ahead and hit them up. Get a free consultation. He can tell you if there's anything that they can do for you. But let's jump into the news, guys. Uh, looking here, we can see that according to the Bitcoin having countdown from Watcher Guru, uh, we are three days and seven hours away from the having 510 more blocks to be written. That'll be on April 19th. That is this Friday. So uh, that's what we have there. Let's jump over here. Look at the fear and greed. Fear and greed is coming in at 65. We're still sitting at greed, dropping a little bit. Uh, it's about a 10 point drop from where we were at not long ago. So uh, I'd like to see this come down a little bit more um, as we go into the having. That would be uh, that would be a very bullish indication for me. Looking here on the crypto bubbles, let's go ahead and give them a little refresh there. Uh, look at the crypto bubbles. We're looking at the daily, and you guys can tell now. I've been showing you these red. It was started red on hourly, then we got the red on the daily, red on the weekly. We're now red on the monthly. Also, we do have some movers on there. Uh, ton still up seventy one point eight percent. Core up two hundred forty four percent. Pendle one thirty four. Ondo up sixty nine point six percent. Let's jump down here and take a look though at the sea of red down here on this. Uh, uh, on this beautiful market cap, guys. Uh, weekly down 11% for Bitcoin. You can just see it, everything's red here. With anything green, let's just go down and find something green. Near protocol in the last hour, it's made a 0.7% rally. Overall, though, for the week, still down 31.5%. Um, nothing really 
holding strong on here, guys. On at least on the weekly, on the monthly, everything is pretty much red. You do have some things like Bitcoin Cash that's still up twenty one percent, but they've erased a lot of their gains already. So um, yeah, that's what we have there. Let's jump in and take a look at the Bitcoin liquidations. The past twenty four hours, one hundred nine thousand six hundred forty nine traders liquidated. Total liquidations coming in at three hundred and thirty million dollars. Uh, the largest single liquidation that happened on OKX uh, would be Ethereum, a USD swap, $5.9 million, million dollars. So uh, that's what we have there. And let's look at the economic calendar, guys. I want to apologize. Yesterday, I missed a little something uh, to bring up. I told you guys we had retail sales, but I didn't go over the numbers. Uh, the numbers up. 0.7% there uh, was forecasted and consensus to be up three tenths of a percent, four tenths of a percent, actually coming up at seven tenths of a percent, down a little bit, but that is still month over month a pretty significant increase in retail sales. But there's some hidden data in there. So let's jump over here to the tree, okay? I'm Let's jump back here. Uh, hidden data that no one is really looking at. Uh, well, a couple of people, but most people are not. That retail sales increase of seven uh, tenths of a percent. If you take a look at the, because that's uh, that is going to be um, versus last year's March, right? Uh, it's actually down. Yeah, I know the number said it was up, but it's actually down. Would would either of you like to uh, provide some insight or thought of why you think retail sales is actually down, even though it was up? You're muted. This thing is just not cooperating. <laughs> right. it, it was like double clicking all by itself. Um, so is that, that's zero year over year numbers? Yeah. Yeah. It was versus last March. So there's, there's okay. a little article out there oh. that I found that actually but broke down damn. pretty well for me, but yeah. Why do you, why do you think it is? Why is it actually less, not more, even though it's more? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a freaking riddle, man. You're, you're muted Sitting. again, dude. I don't know what's going on with your mic. It's, it's uh technical issues no. today. <laughs> he, 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 it's okay. Oh, wait, no, you guys are good. Yeah. You're good. Go ahead and talk. All right. No, I, it, go ahead. Full send, man. What do you got? Oh, uh, well, I do I do maybe have a little bit of insight. So you were saying, let me understand a little bit more of what are you, what are you trying to tell me, uh, Piper. So what are the retail numbers are down? And yep. just compared to the previous year that they were up, right? Well, yep. that's uh, almost, I will say that pretty simple, which is the context. So previous uh, context was just a another year. We were pumping. We were basically at the bottom of, of the cycle. Everybody just was, uh, you know, like move, following the movement. And then now we're heading to the halving event. And not only that, we have an early rise. So right now, retail is already exhausted. And we would not be seeing retail picking back again until we see a correction or a liquidation a liquidity wrap to the downside or we see that that uh that funnel kicking back in that's what i think yeah i'm uh i'm having some issues here on my on my uh, audio end but uh I uh, can't hear you, but I heard what part of what you said there, and I'm going to figure this out while you guys are going over some charts. But <laughs> the bottom line is this. Um, it's all this noise of higher retail sales. If you actually look at inflation from the previous year till now, we actually had lower retail sales, and so we sold less. People, we sold less to people, so people bought less, but it cost more overall. That is inflation at play there, and that number uh, is actually scare, scaring the hell out of a lot of economists right now. Uh, let me know, guys. You guys are out shopping. You're out buying stuff. Um, are the prices significantly up from what they were before, um, or is it just you know just slightly up, or has it just been so gradual you haven't really noticed it? Uh, I know for, for one, like we've got... 
um, you know, people, it's springtime. So I know a lot of people right now trying to buy, you know, hey, I need to get some spring clothes. I put on a little weight over the winter, whatever, right? Uh, they might uh, they might have not gone and bought clothes in a while and they go to buy something. They went, why is this so freaking expensive? Like, uh, I think that's going to be something that people see. So that's uh, that's a little reason there. But uh, Tradefly, let's go ahead. Uh, let's jump over. I'm going to start off with uh, the Bitcoin chart here and then we'll take a look at uh, what you're seeing on the Dixie and while you're doing that uh, I'll we'll try to work uh, work my audio issue over here uh it's just it's it's, uh, it's a Tuesday morning tech nightmare T tech Tuesdays here we go that's right I uh, love it uh, <laughs> say that again for me I said tech Tuesday Oh, I can hear you. That's beautiful. Tech Tuesdays. Yes. Uh, let's get into the Bitcoin chart here, guys. Uh, look at Bitcoin. Yesterday, we talked about this uh, retest or recovery. Uh, and I said it looks definitely like a retest. We absolutely, it's what it was. We're currently sitting right now at 62,840. Uh, but I want to point something out. Look what we have right here, right there look at that what is that that's the old peak seeker there from chart prime uh oscillator pro and guys when we get these they typically mark out near tops and bottoms so you can see here we had one here we had one um we had one here typically when these print they do a pretty good job of showing you bottoms however uh even though it is a bottom and we do get a return up you can see that this eventually did come back down here uh but for the time being, right now, we do have one sitting here on this uh, four hour. We do have that uh, bullish divergence there, and it does look like we're starting to get some slight deviation on the size there of the candles. So uh, this could actually be uh, the moment we're waiting for with drum roll. We'll just have to wait and see if it happens for us or not. Um, but right now, that's what I'm seeing on the Dixie. Uh, Trade fly, let's go ahead and kick it over. Uh, you can take a look at your heat map, and then we'll talk about the, uh, or that's uh, what I got for Bitcoin. We'll take a look at the heat map, and we'll talk about the Dixie. Let's kick it over to you. Right on. Yeah, got the uh, liquidation heat map up on. This is on the daily chart. You can see a couple of hot spots here. The first one is getting hot at about 64, 200, 250 in that area, and then uh, 65, 450. So it looks like short term, like near, like close, close to the boat, we'll say. Uh, there is some liquidity a little bit closer on the top side. Uh, there's not as much. It's pretty weak down here uh, on the bottom side of it, but. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit because that usually gives us a little bit indicator of some stronger areas. And this is looking pretty weak, right? So this is on the weekly. And if you're looking at it right now, like it looks like a lot of the liquidity has kind of been cleared out, which really frees up, uh, you know, Bitcoin's ability to move as it should, right? You're not concerned or thinking about where liquidity is sitting at. You're not too worried about any of the cascading effects. Uh, so this could be a good sign if if Piper is looking at it and seeing that there's the potential maybe for a reversal here, especially if it comes down to an area of support. Uh, let me pull up my chart real quick here. This is an area I am looking at at uh, 60,000. We'll call it 61,000. Uh, if we come down here and get another touch, Piper kind of pointed out to you uh, the peak seeker print it. But the other thing is too you're starting to get a little bit of divergence. Now, if it comes all the way down, it's not technically gonna be divergence, but what it will be is RSI starting to trend up. We've talked about that plenty of times. I like to see two touches in an area, but I like to see the RSI or the prime oscillator trending up and right. So this could be an area uh, for an intraday uh, trade setup potentially. So did wanna point that out to you guys. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Yeah, that's what I, I'm seeing some potential here but uh one thing that i do want to point out if i jump over here to my the, the wallen chart shout out to eric wallen um one thing that i had talked about here when we had gotten into this channel of the golden pocket was i would be closely watching the weekly close and if we as long as we just wicked below and pulled back up for the weekly close, I was going to be fine. I said, but if we close below this, I am looking at that target of $56,000 being the target. Well, we closed this candle beneath it and we just had nothing but sell off this whole week. So um, that, that little indication that I had been watching for there uh, definitely did play out. If you guys saw the newsletter, newsletter went out yesterday. We actually talked a little, uh, actually there was, 
it was on Bitcoin. Uh, we talked about that. So uh, that was one of the things that we uh, pointed out was uh, those support levels there, $56,000. So oh, see, let's kick it over to you, see what you got. And then I'm going to uh, talk about what we're seeing in some news uh, and why I talked about uh Am I, should I sell? We're going to talk about that too. So stick around, guys. Uh, if you guys are getting uh, anything out of this, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Let's go ahead and kick it. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look at what I have right here on my charts. Remember that yesterday I was calling for this pattern here. Not only that, I did told you guys that I did enter here and that if you were looking for a re-entry, I would be looking for something like a secondary candle and I circled the secondary candle for a possible next uh, entry. So what happened, we did have that secondary candle and also remember that I pull, I show you this other pullback right down here to what to after make this structure going down a breakout right and then a retest for a cricket uh double bottom or even a slightly up uh double bottom here and change of structure so, so basically just pushing upwards here uh remember that for a long time we were looking at these areas right down here and that's exactly what i did enter at this first point what happened we went up i took 50 percent out in here and then going back down did not close my position and by the way why because remember at this point i am not uh, closing any positions those are my holding positions and then it just goes back to my back and that fits percent out i'm just gonna get uh forget about it because it's back on my huddle back so right now we are right there also another thing that i was pointing out at this point it is the double divergence that we have had so so far we have one divergence in here and something that is not matching or adding up which is the only thing that i don't like it is the ribbon what's happening with that ribbon well but now I would like to see it to see it already have just going forward and at least getting to the edge of the cloud. So so far it decided to flip back down and seems like it's going to be defined in the next up three candles, one, two and three, whether we stay above and we and if we do, we have serious possibilities because we also have a peak security here that we make a major retracement and major. I'm going to say with quotations because we have been calling this range for almost two months, right? Or even longer. So my retracement will be at least to the dynamic reactor somewhere around 66, 700, uh, 54, somewhere around that area. But if not, I mean, we need to strap on because most likely we are going to be breaking this area. And if we bounce from the zero line, most likely again, we're going to be retracing and then going for that retest. Hyper, sorry, what Trade Flight has been looking at for a long time, this big area of support. Let's just wrap it up in here. So remember, this was an example. So, so far, play out very, very nicely. And as you can see, it's following my main zone. Again, you can see right here that yesterday I was talking about that if we do not hold, and you can see this uh, prediction, and if we do not do this with the oscillator, most likely we're going to be breaking down and visiting lower volume. So I'm going to leave this analysis untouched so we can keep tracking it and then, I mean, just... Uh, you know, like be prepared for whatever it's happening on the market. So yeah, that's what I got. Oh, uh, awesome, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm still having my audio issues over here. You're, you're in and out for me, but I'm glad everyone else out there can hear you. Uh, I'm just going to uh, play it by ear from here. So uh, jumping over here, guys, real fast, let's jump into this news. This is what we were talking about on the news. Uh, this is the headlines. We sold everything last night, reveals crypto research firm. Let's jump in and break this down, see what they had to uh, sell here. Um, let's go and check it out. Uh, down here, guys, Marcus Thielen of 10X Research unveiled a significant shift in his crypto strategy um, in response to mounting financial pressures and market instability. As detailed, in investor notes released earlier today, so they, re uh, they released their investor notes. This was in there. Uh, Thielen, an influential figure in the analysis assessor, cited a concerning outlook on risk assets, which encompasses both technology stocks and cryptocurrencies, primarily driven by unanticipated and ongoing inflation. 
Uh, according to the projections from Bank of America, U.S. CPI headline inflation is expected to go to 4.8% by November 2024. That would be the election period there. Over the past three months, month over month, CPI inflation has averaged about four tenths of a percent uh, each month coming up. So that's 1.2% there. Uh, or, an average increase of about 1.2%. And acceleration at this speed would mean that the rate is more than twice the Federal Reserve's inflation target of 2% by November. Uh, why 10X Research sold almost, keyword there, almost all crypto and risk assets. Uh, basically, they're going risk off. Notably, the U.S. bond market is currently projecting fewer than three Federal Re uh, Reserve rate cuts this year and a significant uh, adjustment from earlier, more optimistic forecasts. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, majority of the market participants are now looking for that rate cut from the Fed um, no sooner than September, mid-September FOMC. And uh, you can see that chart right here. That is uh, what well, that biggest percentage is coming in at in September. That would be uh, right here in this 9, 45% there chance, 29% uh, uh, chance that it's going to be the same. So uh, not seeing much in the way of rate cuts there. And then our growing concern is that the risk assets are teetering on the edge of significant price correction. So we sold all of our tech stocks last night. Uh, the NASDAQ is doing very poorly and reacting to higher bond yields because those are on the rise also, which means people are, you know, selling selling those uh, those uh, risk assets and buying bonds. We only hold a few high conviction crypto coins. Overall, we're bearish on risk assets here. The bearish stance is further supported by the disappointing performance of U.S. listed spot Bitcoin ETF. Despite that uh, approval that happened from the SEC, nearly a dozen such ETFs in January. Uh, the influx of capital has markedly slowed. This month, the five-day average net inflows into these ETFs plummeted to zero, a stark contrast to the nearly $12 billion that was moving in over there. Um, let's jump back over here into X marks the spot real fast. And I want to show you guys what I'm seeing here. Um, this is pretty substantial when I take a look at this. Um, where is it at right there? Bitcoin ETO, uh, ETF flow tables. You can see here the, the inflows and the outflows that they have going on total guys, it's negative. Look at the total negative. Like there's more sell-off coming in than what there is, uh, more sell-off happening going out than what there is of uh, people buying out in the ETS from those uh, major uh, institutions there. And then uh, the, the last thing that I did want to show you here and what I was talking about, this is what I was talking about. Should I sell? I'm actually looking at my Bitcoin mining stocks here. Uh, bearish bet. And if we take a look over here, it says this week's Bitcoin halving could result in Bitcoin miners sustaining annual losses of up to $10 billion. Uh, two top ones there that they're watching for. Uh, Marathon Digital, Clean Spark, Riot Platforms. This is their uh, total valuation. And it would be a $10 billion uh, pullback uh, on, on annual losses. Of course, when you're a stock and you report losses what happens uh you get uh you get the sell off and it, it scares the crap out of people it dumps so uh guys what are your thoughts on that article on what's going on there with uh with with the mining stocks uh possible 10 billion dollars in annual losses uh let me know what you guys uh your thoughts on this we'll go with trade fly first what you got man yeah no i mean you're you're hitting right on it i mean i think i talked about that maybe it was last week or so uh, that exact article really is that, or you know what? I posted it on Twitter. That's what it was, is that keep an eye on the mining stocks because it's going to be harder essentially for them to make money, right? And this fits the narrative of what I was talking about originally, that I think some of these big institutions are going to end up funneling into the mining game. I think they're going to try to control the entire process and they won't care about having a little loss. This is Apple's game plan all the time. They will have products and services that take a little bit of a loss because it actually benefits the overall ecosystem. So, you know, this we'll see, man, it's time will tell. Uh, but I, I think that could be the play. Not, not yeah, for investing I, though. Not, not, <laughs> not. Uh, OC, what's your thoughts, man? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there are cycles, right? And between those cycles, we're going to be seeing ups and downs. I mean, oh, so far, everything looking not that bad. I mean, uh, we do have the warning signals and we should be looking at those signals and early on in planning 
for upcoming futures, not just reacting. We know reacting is a big part of, of trading. I mean, how many times Piper, TradeFly, and I have we've been requested, hey, when did you give this call? Or when do you look at it? And we go like, well, right now. And I mean, it, it just happened. I saw it and then I took the trade, right? So, I mean, reacting is a huge part uh, of, of trading, but these reactions come from previous preparation, right? Previous investigation. And this is exactly what we're doing right here on Piper Academy. So, yes, I mean, I believe that overall everything looking good. I mean, we do have those uh, signals, uh, those warning signals. But also, if you if you want to troll on my on my charts, I do have something to look at. So also, I want to show you guys that one of the best traders in the industry is Nancy Pelosi. Why? Don't ask me why. Right? But she is killing it. Oh my God! I follow her, and this is basically one of the first thing I looked at the morning. And we can start seeing her stats, right? And you can look at that. I mean, sell volume going nuts 2023 at the end of it. Then, sorry, 2022, 2021, 2023. And right now, she's got a couple of buying volumes, no selling volumes. But we start seeing based on date that she's been getting rid of a couple of trades, right? So, I mean, whatever she got, look at that. It's mostly bearish. So, we need to be a little bit careful because the big uh, puppeteers are pulling some strings, all right? So just a quick uh, setup here, guys. If you are not uh, following Nancy Pelosi, I do advise that you go follow her to see this is not financial advice on my behalf, on, on her behalf. <laughs> this is not a financial advice, but also uh, Quiver Quantitative uh, is, not a, um, is not a sponsor. So if you're listening, Give us a call. <laughs> Can we get her financial advisor on the show? I would love to hear his take on what we should be investing into. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, that's called insider trading for sure. Hey, be careful though too, just so you guys know, if you're trying to follow uh, some of these uh, government officials or uh, people that were tied into that arena, they have, I want to say it's either 30 or 60 days of report. So just understand that you could be seeing a delay uh, once they make that investment if you are trying to follow or mimic their trades. So just be very uh, aware of that. A lot can happen in two months. Absolutely. Thanks so much for that trade fly because that is very, very important information. This is for me a, uh, a legacy or a late indicator, right? It's not for me to copy trade. Uh, uh, with her just to look at where the trend of her actions are leading to. So yeah, yeah. I'm not copying her traits at all. <laughs> hey, no, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I want to show you, know, you guys something do, here. Oh, they, and they that, do ahead, really well with it. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say some people actually trade with that and that's that they literally just follow that and they still do very, very well. Um, just, I just wanted to throw that nugget out there that you could potentially be on the backside of a trade just because of the delay. Uh, other thing is, oh, say, if you don't mind, go ahead and post that link in the uh, chat so people have access to it. That'd be dope. Absolutely. Posting it right now. Awesome. Let's jump I'm over here, guys. I want to show you guys right. one thing real fast here. Uh, taking a look here, there's, there's a data that just came out. Uh, where are we at here? Let me refresh and pull this up. Uh, this is uh, just came out from the Kabisi letter. He said the 10-year note... Uh, this is the 10-year bonds, uh, uh, trade, uh, treasury bonds from the U.S. government. 10-year yield just uh, is now up 90 basis points year to date and nearing 4.7% for the first time since November 2023. As the treasury yields rise, we're seeing further pressure on stocks and other risky assets. And what I wanted to show you based off of that is this right here. You guys think the fear and greed for Bitcoin is, is wonky. Guys, this is the fear and greed right now for the stock market. This is stock market sentiment from your TradFi investors. Uh, it's sitting at 41 in high fear. So um, that's what we're, uh, that's, that's what crypto is up against is that sell off pressure from stocks. If they're selling the higher risk crypto, obviously, uh, in, in significant uh, sell off mode also. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into some altcoins and let's start looking at some ta and then uh, we're going to wrap this out with uh, some good news 
there's some good news today. It's not all bad, um, and we'll take a look at that. But as of right now, guys, uh, yeah, I am definitely uh, considering, just for transparency's sake, I'm considering taking my profit on my uh, on my micro strategies and on my um, clean spark because I've up significantly on them and I might sell off not all but about half just to keep some of that gains and if it does go lower I'll be prepared to inject that in at some lower levels and uh, drop my average down so that's where I'm at right now on those but uh, yeah trade fly let's kick it over to you we'll start off with some altcoins we'll pass it to you pass it to OC we'll come back around and uh, we'll just start taking some let us know in the chat guys what TA you would like to see let's go trade fly what you got for us bro cool so we talked about it a little bit pre-show sorry it's not an altcoin dxy i just want to take a quick look at that one uh what i am looking at right here is this area all right so you had a previous range that it looks like we want to come back up and visit now if the volume profile or the fixed range volume profile was working you'd probably see what they call a naked point of control somewhere in this area and it looks like it's coming back up to try to revisit that all right so it's up here, but the other thing you got to look at, if you look kind of close, is this area right here, which was obviously resistance. It looks like it's flipping it into support. Like you got a wick off of it right now. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can get it up to be a little bit bigger for you. Um, there we go. All right. So now we're really seeing it. Okay. So comes up, comes back down. You get your retest, uh, multiple touches. Uh, everything is just a little bit slow right now. I don't know what's going on with trading view, but it did get a retest and it looks like it wants to confirm that this is now support. So what does that mean? Well, that means it could actually have potential for movement to the upside and revisit this area at about 107. And we did talk about that area yesterday as well. So that overall, is not going to be great news for bitcoin we know that there is a loose inverse correlation you hear me talk about it over and over again but it does look like uh i don't know are you guys uh, trading view just absolutely failing right now because mine is i'm getting all kinds of stuff going on but uh let's tech jump tuesday, over to baby. Uh, tech tuesday yeah yeah it is man it's i mean that's i don't think it's me who knows all right let's go over to pay pay we haven't talked about pay pay i think in like over a month so I'm just going to take a quick look at PayPay on the daily. And the reason I'm taking a look see at it is because we're getting close. I mean, we're sitting on top of the golden pocket right now. It did come down and wick down into that. And a lot of the, the altcoins pulled back really hard, pretty harsh. Uh, but overall, it did uh, bounce in that area. And now it looks like it wants to hold on the golden pocket as support. So, you know, it kind of lines up, right? We talked about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an area of support. Now PayPay is finding an area of support. And the other thing is here, you're seeing a reversal of trend as well as oversold. And this is on the daily, so that's probably a little bit stronger. There could be an opportunity here for, you know, PayPay to hold. And uh, maybe if Bitcoin makes its move up and right, you're going to see PayPay move up and right. And I would say all kinds of zeros and a 5.9 here would be well in play, which is the 0.5. And you can just look back left on the chart and see uh, support. It's going to be resistance initially. You already see that. You already got confirmation that it is resistance. But... I could see a nice little move up there if Bitcoin makes a move up and right. Um, so keep an eye on that. And then keep an eye on this area here where the uh, golden pocket is. Bunch of zeros, four, six, bunch of zeros, and four, three. Um, if that loses, that's not going to be pretty, though, because that's going to come probably way down here. So just something for you to keep an eye on. Quick quick little look-see at PayPay, Pay, simple TA, uh, nothing too complex there. Awesome. Yeah, we got a request for Ondo, Solana, Manta, Zeta, Injective, TIA. Uh, Injective Ooh. and uh, TIA are from Alex. Oh, Crypto in the house. So shout out to Alex. Oh, and then, uh, yeah, just let me know, guys, what you guys are taking there in the uh, Discord chat. Uh, that's for OC and Tradefly. Let me know what you guys are going to get. But I'm going to go ahead and jump on Ondo in a minute. Uh, OC, what do you got for us, bro? All right. I do have, well, I was looking at, what was it? Adam. So I also was looking at the uh, oil, why? Because I'm tracking what's going on with, you know, the a conflict, international conflict, and how the U.S. has been saying that, no, it would not be participating because we're in election year and the, pri the price of oil could be rushing up, and that will not be great for elections, right? I mean, again, this is only speculation, what I just mentioned. Nonetheless, it's a big important part of what we're seeing this strength within this flat bottom triangle with the fake out that yesterday was talking about almost went perfectly to the entry point. It did not reach the dynamic reactor. So again, I did not uh, active a, any 
a sort of movement there. What happened is that we broke back inside the triangle. And I think it's time for me to update that triangle like this and give it a little bit of a more structure. So we have new information and we're going to be taking that new information to rebuild the triangle. So, so far, we're still within the new triangle. We haven't broke only a couple of... Uh, Fake out, and again we are having a strength signal. While we are hovering back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and we neither go up, neither go down. But since this is a flat bottom triangle, usually we break down, and we've been fighting things and nails to hold it all the way up here. Another important thing that I'm going to be touching on after I go with the requests, uh, it is the atom uh, entry point for holding. I was talking about Adam here, and what happened is this, this was my entry point. Well, in fact, it, this was my entry point. What happened, I did enter on this area. Why? Because we have flip of the ribbon. It seems like it did not uh, play it out. Why? Because we have a rushing volume, right? But we're still below the zero line. And what happened? We dump a little bit more. So right now, I'm a little bit underwater on Adam. That is fine, because I will be planning for a next entry soon as soon as i see bitcoin either bouncing or breaking back down and remember adam for me is a dca option and i will not be just getting uh you know desperate fomo or food or anything like that just keep it chill and the lower it goes the more i'm gonna get so that's what i got guys and then uh pass it over to you and we'll type in the chat what i'm gonna be taking up next awesome sounds good man i'm taking a look here at ondo i got ondo up right now uh looking at ondo guys we did have a pump up here uh, we had talked about uh yesterday let's go ahead and move the oscillators off screen for a second yesterday we were looking at this bounce that we got here uh on the golden pocket that's when i bought into my ondo purchase uh over the weekend and then we uh we pumped pretty decent we hit the 382 here had a little bit of resistance at the point of control that's that dash red line running across there on top of that 382 and then we came up we didn't quite make it to the zero line of this previous high here uh, and started to pull back with market sell-off yesterday. Right now, getting a lot of support again on that 382 and on that point of control uh, after losing that value area high of the fixed range volume profile. If we go over here and we take a look at what we got, this is the node of volume right here that we're currently trying to hold a support. So what I'm going to be watching for is if we lose this node, let's go ahead and put a horizontal line in right here. Uh, we're going to put this right there. This is going to be a little horizontal line for me. This is going to be for this volume node that's coming in right below us. Because if we lose this uh, 382 line uh, at the point of control here, it, that, little, that little swoop right there is going to be where our next level of support is going to catch. And I'm going to be watching for that to hold if we break this 382. Of course, if we lose that point of control, guys, very likely heading back down to that value area low. Um, we do have a 50% in here. If we do not get a bounce on that, then I would be looking for us to make this into another move down to the platinum pocket down here. That platinum pocket currently coming in at about 52.8 cents. But uh, uh, overall, I'm feeling... I'm feeling neutral on Ondo right now because we are holding some key levels of support of that point of control and that 382. Let's take a look at what we're seeing on the oscillators. Oscillator does look like we are getting some curvature here on this uh, for a possible zero bounce. However, there is a little thing going on there that I'm seeing, and that is that continuation wave. When we see those continuation waves, it looks like that right there. And that could be what we're seeing right now, even though there, when we had that cool off level, right there, we see where it kind of came in like it was curving and then it went into another wave. We consolidated in that period. So if Ondo uh, does get that continuation wave of the cool off that I'm seeing here on the oscillator, I would be watching to see if we can do a consolidation in this area of support. So, uh, me personally, if I had to call a trade on this right now, I would not be trading Ondo based on the mixed signals that I'm getting back and forth on that. So uh, trade fly, let's kick it over to you, see what you got. That's what I have on Ondo. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Discord and see what you guys are uh, following up with. So, All right, right on. I'm going to get that soul train ready. All right, looking at uh, soul on the four hour here. There is a negative point of control down here at about the range of the golden pocket all right so keep that in mind but just looking at it right now you do have an area of support 
that it is trying right now. So let's go ahead and highlight that, that for you guys uh, just so we can see it a little bit more clear. You got a uh, support there, and you also have, it looks like uh, you have resistance right there at about the 382. So we don't have to really mark that one. But this one at about 125, keep an eye on that. Uh, and that's just really going back left on the chart and taking into consideration this area where we got held up. And then ultimately it started making its move up and right. But hey, key areas, right? 0.5 uh, at about 115. You can see this nice wick off of there showing you that there was some buying pressure in that area. However, if you're looking at it and you come down to the prime oscillator right now, you know, what are you seeing here? All right, you're seeing a little bit of divergence, right? Prime oscillator is going up and right. Price is going down and right. Not ideal, but I would let that play out a little bit. I don't know that that necessarily means right now we're going to see a reversal in the price action. Uh, I would like to see it come down to an area of support, whether it be 125 or even down to the 0.5 at about 115. Uh, that's kind of what I would personally be looking for. But again, it's kind of going to be on the greater market. We'll see if Bitcoin holds up uh, in its support area. If it does, then you know we could probably see that reversal uh, a little bit sooner. But key area, uh, uh, I would say the biggest key area for you guys to look at uh, is really going to be uh, the golden pocket, right? So if we really have a significant pullback, now that's crazy because now we're talking about soul under $100, and that is, you know, off of you know $200, which is a massive pullback. But, it, you know, for me to get excited here, uh, I'm not really too excited in this area right now. Uh, but if it comes down to the golden pocket, then absolutely uh, that's going to be an area I, I'm looking at right now. So uh, $92 to about $86, uh, I would say go ahead and send an alert on that. Like you can make it so that when it touches, you know, horizontal line that your alert goes off. So I would set it right with the point of control, actually, uh, that way that I know it's coming in. You see this little uh, add alert button. Boom, so create. Once it touches this area, you'll get a little alert. You'll hear a little beep, let you know that uh, it's touched this area right here. So, but you know, short term, uh, if you guys are doing some intraday scalping, go ahead and look uh, 125 and about 115 uh, for some potential bounces in those areas. Awesome. What you got for us, OC? Let's kick it over to you, man. Absolutely, I got Manta and Ajin J. Let's go go back very quick to Manta. Why? Because look at that. We've been ranging since we basically launched. So let's just take a look at a um, uh, minute in here. I'll take a little bit of here and look at the main range that we're uh, onto. So right here, we are back at initial ranges all the way down here, even a little bit lower. It seems to be very positive because we have a double divergence. We have a double pick seeker. We're pushing upwards. It seems like we're going to be breaking in. Yes, we are going to be breaking that zero line but something key and look at this uh remember where is my dynamic reactor how far am i of that dynamic reactor in comparison to where to the zero line breakout why am i telling you this guys because look at for example this other breakout it we were very tight against the dynamic reactor and ultimately we did made a long lasting for Manta uh, breakout, all right? Then, as you can see, break back below both the zero line and the dynamic reactor, and we are in a long lasting break below the zero line and overall downtrend, which means, by the way, if we look at this other uh, channel, we break out, and then it's not about the breakout, it's about the what, the retest. And as you can see, since we're gonna be breaking the zero line, most likely, we are going to be making another spike like this, right? So maybe that spike and that spike could maybe take us to the big resistance. And what is the big resistance? The bottom of the channel and also the uh, the, uh, the dynamic reactor and also the prime uh, trend assistance right here. So as you can see, it is not looking like a change of, uh, of um, trend, but only a bounce for a further continuation. What we also could be having is a little grinding all the way to the upside and then a little dump and then continuing to the upside. But that will have to do something like that. So other than that, that's what I got in Manta. Very kicker 9J. We have a little bit more information in here. And I want to bring up this section right here on my left. Uh, because I want to show you guys that we have we are on the big gap and we have right down here to my right a little point of oh, let's just wait for it come on trading you whenever you're ready 
Yeah, it's, it's right. a little slow today. It's wonky. Tech, Tech <laughs> Tuesdays right here on Piper. Oh, my gosh. Yes. All right, maybe passing it over to you, Piper, and then I just come back and do INJ when this thing loads. Awesome. Yeah, I can go ahead and take uh, take take my next uh, asset here. I've, I've got up uh, TIA, but we need someone to take Zeta, Z-E-T-A, if uh, one of you guys can grab that. Um, I'm going to jump up. over here into my chart, and I'm taking a look here at TIA. Uh, so we have, I'm looking at a four-hour chart here. We did have a reversal print on uh, Chart Prime's indicators uh, up here. As we were uh, leaving this value area high of the fixed range volume profile, this fixed range volume profile coming from the last time we were in the golden pocket, when we came down here, and you can see uh, we tried to hold the golden pocket here. Um, we did get a few wicks down below, but overall, candles closing pretty decent in the golden pocket there. Uh, right now, we did get a rejection, and you guys can see there's a 50% there, and I'd say when we reject off the 50, that is bearish. Uh, if we reject to the downside, if we bounce uh, for support off the top side, it's bullish. We did get that rejection perfectly right there, and on top of that green line, that purple line running across there that's your value area low of that entire period so we are underneath all of the volume um profile the 70 percent volume profile for this entire period dating all the way back to uh december 2023 so about four months worth of data there uh sitting below that right now you can see right now we do have this volume node on TIA, that is printing right here in this range. If we stretch this out and take a look, we're trying to hold above that. I would be watching for this because you can see the last time we touched that dynamic reactor, we got rejected off of it. And that dynamic reactor is coming in right in line with that value area low, that 50% Fibonacci range. Uh, if we get a pump up here and we reject here, I would be looking for a short entry sitting at about $11.70. Real tight stop loss right above that point of control would be a fantastic uh, way to look at this. Um, and then uh, if we do reject there, I could see us coming back to the platinum pocket. The reason that I think that is, if we go back and we look at another fixed range volume profile of the earlier cycle, that value area high is sitting right there at that 786 platinum pocket. That would be the trade setup for us to reject off of that dynamic reactor, confluence with the value area low, confluence with the 50 downside platinum pocket test there. Uh, looking at the oscillators also, let me bring this up just a little bit and stretch it out. There we go. We can see that we are uh, getting above that 50% line, and we are above that 50% line on that zero line, I should say, on the Oscillator Pro. Both of those would give us uh, that possibility of upside movement uh, right in time for that rejection before these all reject for their downside also. So that's what I got there on TIA. That's for you, Alex O. Crypto, my fam. Uh, let's kick it over to uh, Tradefly and see what he's got. Right on. Still kind of working through this, uh, looking at Zeta. This will be something that's pretty new to me, but what I have found is this nice uh, channel that was kind of just working down and right along with the moving averages, just kind of staying underneath of them, but just using those as resistance almost all the way down, uh, unfortunately. And then it really had that breakdown, right? But that's in conjunction with everything that was going on. Uh, everything's really been dumping, so so did Zeta. However, it did find some support. It did wait hey, down below fast. this yeah what's up you know what else just dumped for some reason i think we do have tech tuesday going on because we just dropped from 70 viewers down to like 27 in like 10 seconds so yeah it's tech tuesdays all over the place man something's going on today with the internet so uh but, <laughs> yeah. you know uh investing bros was having that issue like mid show they were just like dumping like half of their audience it's crazy so but Cool. Let's get back to this. Zeta on the uh, four hour again. We had this channel that was going down and right. Uh, and you do have this area of support right here. So I haven't highlighted it. Um, it was support. It is resistance now. But that's at about 1.65. All right. So you can see it held up, right? It worked down, uh, came down, hit it again. And basically, that's ultimately where the breakdown is. So you guys will hear me talk about this time and time again. That means this is a really important area here at about 1.65. So here we go. You got support here at about 1.14. Unfortunately, if it dumps underneath of this area here, I don't have a lot for you, right? Because what you'll probably see if it does get under here is you'll see it come down, retest this area, and then dump Ola, 
because there's just nothing really here to give me any kind of confirmation of where it could go once it pulls through that area. Uh, so let's just hope it holds up, all right? <laughs> so if it holds up here, then the area you want to look for, at least on the top side, as your initial area of resistance is going to be uh, 1.65. But just looking at the support area, you can see it came up, came down, got the retest that OC likes to talk about. See the prime oscillator moving up and right. So it is showing a little bit of strength, and it looks like it wants to break out, right? So it's kind of coming down. This area was resistance right here, just a little little area of resistance. And it's a retest in that area. Kind of wants to flip it into support now for potentially making a move up and right again. So watch the trend line, watch this area, watch your moving averages. All that's on the top side as resistance. So I would look for uh, if it does push up a rejection up in that area. Fantastic. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, shout out to uh, Crypto City. I, I, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, man. I appreciate it. I'm I apologize, brother. But he said, no, it's you two messing with the crypto shows. Uh, C Blood had the same issues a few days ago. Uh, crypto Blood did. Uh, so I guess that's who he's talking about, Seablood. Uh, similar issue. So that, yeah, looks like uh, we do have something going on there uh, with. Uh, with uh, YouTube and us. So that's why we need you guys to hit the like button, to hit the subscribe button and let them know that uh, you want this and to share it out to your friends because it helps the algorithm because uh, the powers that be are working against us right now. Uh, OC, let's kick it back over to you. Let's see what you got, bro. Uh, did you get get that chart up? Let's, uh, let's see it. Absolutely. I want to point out something very interesting that is actually got me mesmerized. And it seems like we haven't changed asset all the way back from Tia. I mean, as you can see, we have this big range and the past one that uh, Trayfly was looking at was, was C Zeta or C. Uh, I don't quite remember the name of it. Zeta. Uh, yeah. It was Zeta. Zeta. Oh. Yes. By the way, that's the name of my sister. Shout out to my sister. <laughs> It is. And I've met a sister. I've met a sister. She's awesome. Yeah. She's way cooler, way cooler than OC. <laughs> that's what I've been told, but that's a lie. Well, <laughs> we got something in common. <laughs> and it's not the coolestness, I can tell you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we seems freakishly similar because we have a range. Uh, I mean, either down range, let's see that, or sideways right here. But what seems to me and gets me mesmerized is this movement. So everything is following whatever did that movement. And what do you think has dropped and pushed all of the altcoins? Well, of course, Bitcoin. So most of the, I mean, if not all of the analysis, as you can see, we all have different patterns that follow different things. But we all came to the same conclusion, maybe a retest, maybe a pullback to the upside, and then continuing to where the next big support area is. So as you can see, we have a huge gap in here. Where do we have retail money? What happens on retail money? We oscillate. So that's a good uh, bump or a good uh, stopping area, right? So, so far, maybe looking because we have that bullish uh, that bullishness almost ready to break above the zero line. So if we do, we might go all the way here for just a rejection and then following back down, right? So be careful right here uh, on INJ. Most likely we're going to be seeing that pullback and then retracement. And that's what I got on INJ. Very simple and quick. Awesome. Yeah, I had a request to do uh, some Clean Spark real fast. Let me jump over here and see what we got here on Clean Spark. Uh, was looking at some other stuff there. Um, looking at Clean Spark here, man, we lost our golden pocket. We had a clean rejection to the dollar right there off of that 0.66, losing that golden pocket now. Um, very likely heading down here to the 50. I'm, I'm very bearish right now on uh, the Bitcoin mining based on, I don't know if you were in here a little bit ago, you can go back and watch it, but uh, it looks like with the upcoming halving, uh, we could see some pullbacks, more pullbacks on the mining uh, stocks, Bitcoin mining stocks, because uh, with the difficulty level increasing, doubling uh, in the rewards having, while price is also going down, which means less profit margin for them, uh, the the uh, mining world is looking at about uh, an annualized $10 billion in losses. So those earnings uh, definitely are going to play uh, havoc 
uh let cry havoc on the dogs war um let it go uh there on a uh, clean spark it's it's gonna drop hard so um i'm watching that that's why i was talking about i'm maybe taking some of my profit selling half and then looking at buying back lower to uh, average in some lower entry so uh because as of right now my entry is right down here on clean spark at ten dollars and 42 cents and i've lost a significant portion of profit there i'd like to keep some of it that i have uh no one's ever gone broke taking profit so uh let's kick it over to trade fly see what you got uh we got time for one more and then i've got to go over uh the, the good news article and show you where we're at so. absolutely traveling man in the house crypto seeker hey fam he says hey the, the man the beat the legend welcome what up and dj right. from the blockchain don't miss so i'm going to take a look at the total market cap um so I'll, it'll be very very quick but the reason i want to look at the total market cap is because it is eerily similar to Bitcoin and you're looking at it. So I got the fixed range volume profile up and you can see uh, the only real difference is the point of control is a little bit higher. But if you look at the value area low here, it tested that area. Actually, it was using that as resistance when it came back up, but it's still pretty, pretty similar. You do have the moving averages on the top side, but look, uh, the little difference is, is that you know, there's still a little bit of movement or, or a little bit of room here. Not really. It's actually, it's kind of found support there. So let's draw this line here. It's, it's very similar uh, to Bitcoin. And I don't know if that's just because of the dominance or what. Let's go ahead and change that to green. But same deal. All right. So you could be finding some support in this area overall, though. Like if you come down and you look at the prime oscillator, uh, that's not beautiful. That is not really what you want to see if you're looking at a trend. Like if you were to put a line right here. Like it's all trending down, trending down and right. And you're not really seeing any like change, right? You would like to see this get up above this area here. You want a peak that's a little bit higher. And same thing with price action. That'll kind of give you an indication that you might see a reversal and trend as well. So I just wanted to show this to you guys. I mean, there is an area of support right now. We're kind of hoping that that holds up. But, you know, if it doesn't, uh, you can see what the potential downside looks like. And, uh, Unfortunately, it might not be pretty. If you start thinking about the altcoins, you're talking about going back to uh, some of the bear market lows. Uh, unfortunately, if Bitcoin continues to uh, pull back or the overall market cap actually continues to pull back as well. So keep that uh, keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of bearish sentiment going around right now. And you can look here, 60 minute bearish, four hour bearish. Ellie is bullish, but it looks like everything is starting to trend uh, in succession up to uh, the daily so you could see us flip there for that to go uh, bearish as well so keep eye on it hoping this area holds up 2.18 million seems to be a pretty important area yeah absolutely uh look jump over here this is the wrap out for the day guys uh so back to that article we sold everything last night uh he did give a level down here that he would be looking to buy he said teeling concluded promising a strong re-entry into the market under more favorable conditions we'll buy back with both hands at fifty two thousand. we promise um it's interesting and we're going to take a look at that level in a sprint in a second but i want to also jump over here and talk about key reasons why bitcoin's collapse is not a major concern and it really boils down to this article right here uh this tweet pre-bitcoin having price fluctuations it's essential to recognize that before each halving cycle there's typically a price collapse a pattern we've highlighted numerous times in the past this is from owen chain Tarek, and you can see here uh previous halvings that's the red lines on here 40.3% drop uh, previously before that, 20.35. Right now, we're cur currently at about 16.657%. Let's jump over to the chart and take a look at what we're seeing here. Uh, I'm looking at a three-day chart for Bitcoin, guys. In that $52,000 range uh, that he said, guys, it's the golden pocket right down here. It would be this previous cluster that we had here on the three day. Uh, something that I do want to point out right now, I'm looking at the MVP oscillator from Chart Prime. Uh, if you take a look at this on the three day, we do have green candles printing down here. And if we take a look at where we've had, uh, when, what's happened the previous times we've had those, we had bright green here. You can see that that was literally calling the bottom there. We had bright green here, literally calling the bottom here. We had some bright green here. We did come up a little bit and come down a little bit lower, but then we started to get those two shades there before that move up. Uh, typically when we get these, yeah, there's another one right there. Pretty much looks like what we see right now. 
I do see that we could come down a little bit lower here, but we are seeing some bullish signs on the three day here of a bottom indication on the chart prime uh, oscillator pro MVP oscillator. If you guys have a chart prime and you don't know where that's at, just hit your settings. It's one of your oscillator selects here and it's the MVP oscillator. So we are seeing some of that there, but that $52,000 range that he's talking about buying in, that would be right there on that golden pocket. Taking a look at my chart, um, $52,000 dollars on here would be a wick down below the 887 but still inside of the platinum pocket for a reversal to the upside so that's what i'm seeing there guys a uh, little bit of good news there we are starting to see some bottom indication strength coming in but overall right now uh yeah they're probably looking at some more downside we've got uh pumping dollar we've got treasury yields at you know up 90 basis points for the for the year and then uh, you've got a lot of things going on in the world still that uh just people are going risk off inflation looks like it could be coming back and i will tell you uh, i've said this uh said this a couple of weeks ago on crypto keeper uh, uh crypto wars over there on his show that we could actually see a scenario set up that leads to another 25 basis point rate hike uh, if inflation continues to come up, we could easily see that. And that scares a lot of people uh, that were just watching. So you can imagine what uh, big investors are looking at. They're like, another rate hike could be devastating. Um, in my opinion, I don't think it's as devastating as not doing a rate hike and inflation getting out of control again. But hey, uh, it's six one way, half a dozen the other. And uh, either way, the investors are going to lose on that on that front. So I uh, just wanted to uh, bring that to light and let people know what's going on there. By the way, speaking of crypto wars, I will be on there today. Uh, I am the guest on every Tuesday on the show there. So I'll be over there on Crypto Wars talking about the markets today, what we're seeing uh, and some of this economic data, doing a breakdown of fundamentals of, of the market structure and where we are in strength and weaknesses. So uh, join us over there. That's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tradefly OC, what you got for the people on the way out, man? Hey, as always, it's great mixing up with you guys. It's just a pleasure to be here. Uh, I am a little tired, so sorry I'm not as uh, energetic as usual. But hey, uh, I think uh, I held it together all right. But hey, it's good mixing it up with you guys. You guys have a great day, and we will see you again tomorrow. Oh, Friday. Nice. Friday. Come see. Come support your boy. I got a one v one with uh, Crypto Blood. It's going down. We will baby. definitely be promoting that. So, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> guys. Thank you so much, LBC. Thank you. Not as beautiful as you. By the way, guys, if you haven't clicked that like button, please do because if you do it, then your iPhone battery will battery will last you for the rest of the day. I promise and if you're an android user let's just show some support to the uh iphone community just click that like button and bring those views back thank you so much for being here and guys love you send it back to you piper Awesome. Guys, hey, thanks for joining us today on Piper Academy. We will be back here tomorrow morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, bringing you guys the news of charts and the markets. Until then, trade safe. And as always, thanks for joining us and use the stop loss. I know you hungry for knowledge, that's profit appetite. Classes and session, this for the army piper acolytes. Trade flag at the soul, train ready. What a line from OCI, former Mexican spaghetti, yo. Crunch crypto with a deep dive to protect dime. And if you like the visual powered by Tar Prime, then you will part of that num not a source bond. But if you have step fall back to offline. We'll keep that front line covered, even when we're dead and gone. We'll find a way to keep going, cause we gon' keep on rolling up the wheels for long. If, if sound off, to get with them, the, 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 the ZTS rhythm. Rip it, sound Alexandra. off. Yeah, that's my love, sound now you off. know what I mean. That was awesome, dude!